Hello. Hello, everyone. Hola. Hey, George, y'all might pull this thing out, man. What's George looking like? I'm trying. We're still counting. Is it count up or close or what? Um, you know what the um, difference is right now? I haven't seen it. I'm sorry. Of falsehoods, lie after lie after lie. No Your president still no saying suppressing his viewers from watching the counting his observers. Who said that? 45. Oh, I thought you said president. I said not my president. <laughs> Georgia, he'd be he's leading right now. 2.445 versus 2.441 million. What's up, everybody? So have they counted the Atlanta area yet? We're still counting. A lot of Fulton County have been counted. I don't know what percentage is complete yet. Oh, okay. We knew he was going to do this. We knew he was going to claim votes by now. Hey, It's a lie. He's lying about the election. He's smearing the American people. He's smearing people who are working at home. We knew. We knew that the president was not going to lose graciously uh, if he if he lost. Uh, but frankly, watching him play like this is just just just. Uh, you, know, he gonna, you know he's trying to take this to the Supreme Court, right? Well, he knew that from the day he was trying to get Amy. And yeah. was already knew. He telegraphed that a long time ago. Time ago. Yeah. You can go all the way back to Gorsuch and Kavanaugh and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Key, what's up, man? <laughs> what's up with you? What's going on, cuz? <laughs> Live, I'm living that dream. Somebody got her. I don't know if I was living that dream. Might yeah. turn into a nightmare tonight, but it's gonna dream right now. <laughs> <laughs> we done lived so through years before. <laughs> yeah. All righty. How everybody doing? Good. Yeah, how you doing? Good, good. We got Keith on here, as always, with his smiling face. <laughs> hey, once again, I well, I I uh I had a text Sabrina. She she's gonna uh probably take the lead on uh on talking through some uh how she do some of her spread strategies. And then I'm gonna throw out the three companies that I was saying would be great for these spreads after she's done. 
uh, Carmisha is gonna, she's gonna join. She said she was running late, but she was gonna uh, also share the screen to show you all what the Robinhood platform looked like. I don't know if you all ever, ever, uh, <laughs> ever seen it, but it, it's really a plain, it's a real plain Jane version. I think, I think everybody on this call, you know, it's, it's a, it's a real plain version of what you already know, what you are accustomed to seeing. It's not real data driven, so you don't you won't see a lot of uh, you won't you won't see a lot of things to click on to get data to help you make a, a, a good decision. So I think that's one of the downfalls to Robinhood is that is the platform don't give you all the all of the the tools that you need to make a, 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 a better educated decision. But she has it. She's going to uh, when she does join. Uh, she'll just fall in line and we'll just let her let her take a lead as Sabrina's done but um I Sabrina is kind of talking through some of that I am going to uh get these companies up hey Gerald once again I got I got my daughter's laptop my uh my my personal laptop was left at the Lake of the Ozarks and then my mother-in-law came to visit yesterday and she forgot to bring it so I'm using this little uh google chromebook and they got everything you can try to google i'm surprised they ain't got zoom block they got everything else blocked you can't you can't go look at a whole lot so um that's why i was like hey may need to reach out to a few people i was gonna ask sabrina to do it anyway uh her and carmisha but i did want everybody to see robin hood platform so it, it is it is very uh very basic no tools and you can easily see how people that's got Robin Hood could make a mistake, like just based on the sheer fact that they don't really have a lot to, to touch on there. But we'll get to that when uh, when when Cormisha hops on. So, Sabrina, basically, I'm not trying to run you off the rails, but if if you just want to touch on, I guess we can go over like go through one company or just show one that you've done and then let, you know, I guess we'll just have a little Q and a about it. And like I said, last week, I'm going to repeat it again. Those, those uh, spreads or more, the probability of a spread being more profitable for you is greater than just selling calls and puts. I'm going to say that again. So this is important to try to learn like what she's doing because a she doesn't need the capital that you all have invested to do to get some of the same returns is why is it why is it is such a critical strategy to try to learn and this and this is just something that we just add to the to the toolbox um kaylin I, I know he probably he hasn't joined in a while but uh did everybody uh, I'm sure everybody read and congratulated him on his uh, little two thousand dollar day that he had today. So I say, big up to Kalen, even though I know he's not on the call. He may need to get on the call and share how he uh, how he chose to to uh, pick up a Q Qcom to uh, I guess he put the the I think Chuck told me early he he did uh, he bought that leap last week so. It didn't take long for it to come full circle for him, but he did. He did a. He made a, a nice move and, and uh, made a nice return. So I'm proud of him. He just keep it up, keep practicing, keep you know, keep doing what he know he needs to do. Yeah, what but, company? Uh, what company that, was that? What company was that in? Uh, what sector is it in? It's Qualcomm, and I think they they uh, so they make chips. They make like uh, like AMD, mm -hmm. uh, like. Uh, Totally the 5G yeah. with an Apple chip, chips or something. Yeah, they, they got an Apple chip that they made for, well, they got a 5G chip that they made for Apple. Chuck said he had, um, he did a deep dive. He, he said, he, um, Kalen went off the, went off the cliff with that one and did a deep dive. And I looked at it and I, the first thing I saw was they had marked it up. What, what, when did I see that strike point? It was a new strike point. They was the analyst that gave it. And uh, it was like 165 or something like that. Yeah, 
They already training their fifty two week high. So, right. You know, I think he said it was supposed to go up to two fifty. Is what some of the analysts had projected it to go. Yeah. But anyway, he did a he did a he did a hell of a job with that, and. Uh, Basically, hey, so last week, um, and I and I had shared this with Gerald on a call. So Jeanette made that spreadsheet, right? Three, three to four months ago. And so um I I've been using it. I've been writing stuff down. And from the data that I've kind of collected, week three on every month since I started writing all those down, week three and every month has been my highest premium collected month wow. and it's like that in every month so i just wanted to throw that out there so kind of look for some opportunities as an example um say week two i say i collect thirteen hundred dollars in week two for whatever reason week three is like thirty three hundred dollars it's almost double so just make sure you all are looking for some opportunities in week three and it may you may want to say, hey, if you in week two, don't go out two weeks because that'll put you in week four. But kind of kind of see what's going on in week three. Obviously, there's a lot of movement. Um, Apple today, the the Apple stock went up four dollars today. There has been. Let me see. I'm looking at it right now. Um, Tesla is up seventeen dollars. Tesla volume today was 28, 28.228 million. Apple stock for today, which I don't know what happened, but the reason for the movement in Apple, their volume was 126 million. So that that's a lot of people buying and moving stuff around with Apple. And that's and that's probably why you have a, a four dollar uh price hike. In, in Apple, and you can use all this on your. Well, I'm, I got my phone up here, and when Sabrina is done, I want to walk everybody through the app real quick to show you how you can add those option legs after after Sabrina um, after Sabrina goes through through her little uh, spill. I see that she's eating, so I'm trying to buy her some time. You're fine. You're fine. Because uh, I know Brian back there. He. <laughs> He already cooked. Is he? His, is your cooking show at a different time or what? Yeah, it's on, it's on a different channel. I didn't want to come in conflict with you different guys. Different channel. Ah, you know? oh, well, so you got to send that. You got to send that out. Too. So what did we? What? What? What did we miss today? Uh, uh, we had uh lobster ravioli and salad. Oh, oh, oh man, wow, man, man! I called him the other day, man, and they were out eating. He he took a break, man. He went wasn't cooking the other day. They yeah. out eating buffalo wings. He got home too late to cook. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> Yeah, we missed the cooking show. Brian, Brian, come on an hour earlier now. He done changed the time. Right. <laughs> I didn't want to be in conflict. Yeah, he done changed the time on us. All right. Well, with that said, you all, I'm gonna hand it over to uh to Sabrina. And Sabrina, you know how to do the screen and all of that. Yeah, I'm about to share it now. Okay. Let me know when you guys can see it. <clears throat> oh, I can see it. You can see it. So um, this is Amazon. Everybody know Amazon and their story, right? So Amazon is a pretty pricey stock. I mean, it's 3000 plus per share. So I like Amazon. Amazon has seemed to have been unaffected by what's going on in the world today in terms of its value. It hasn't like taken any big dives um, regardless of what's happening with our, you know, COVID and in our presidential elections, et cetera. So I think today it was up over $80 um, just in today. So it, it moves quite a bit in a, any given day. But if you look at the volatility on here, I think, you know, the implied volatility for the week of November 13th is like 39. So taking what those had told us a couple of weeks ago, I started, you know, paying attention, more attention to that in, in my selection. Um, on top of that, when I'm going in to pick, I'm looking at something that's got a probability of being in the money of about 25% or less. So probability of being out of the money is 75% or greater. Um, that means I'm taking a one in four chance, right? I got a 25% chance or less of it coming down on me and potentially losing 
my capital risk. Um, I also like to look at my profitability margin. So I want my profitability margin, and we'll talk about that in a minute, to be higher or at least equal to my risk. So if I'm not making 25%, if I'm looking at 25%, if I'm not making 25%, then I don't think that's a good risk for me to take because I'm losing out the jump. So that's like going outside and you're flipping a two-headed coin. You have no chance of winning, right? If it's heads and you're calling tails. So similar to that concept. So looking at Amazon, I, I looked at this one because again, that's way, way down from 25, 24, 23%. And I started looking at around 3,100. I looked at what the open interest was on that, meaning how many people had contracts on this for the week of the 13th. And then obviously the probability of being in the money is only 13%. So if I go in and I try to start a vertical trade, I'm gonna sell and I hit vertical. Immediately it pops up with 10 contracts as Dallas has talked to us about before. And then I know I have $1.27 per contract and premium that I can collect. So for simplicity's sake, let's start with one contract. When I go in and I see this, I, I already know up front, this is a $5 spread because it's 370, I'm sorry, it's 3,100 and 3095. That's the step that I actually put in by default. Hey, so at, if I could stop you right there, cause that, that, that right there, what she just did. So, so everybody needs to understand. <laughs> we can't hear you. I can't hear you. you dropped out. You muted Delos. Oh, now you're about frozen. I think this is connection. <laughs> the squirrel stopped running on the wheel. Google Chrome. He's on that. He's on the Chrome book. <laughs> you, you, you dropped out for forty seconds. Okay. All right. My bad. All right. Bad. So, okay. Cool. So this is a critical. This is a critical part right here, because you need to understand the spread limit. So, like, if she picks thirty-one hundred, and then 30, 90, it's going to be a 10 point spread. But right now she's going to do the 3,100 in the 30, uh, 95, and that's going to give her a five point spread. So that's kind of critical. And when you pick what your gap is, because I'm going to let Sabrina get to it and then you will understand why that gap is so important. Go ahead, Sabrina. Right. So like I said, I know this is a $5 spread. That's the difference between 3,100 on the selling of the put and my buy at $30.95, I'm risking a $5 spread per share. So going back to just for simplicity's sake, one contract, so $1.27, $5 spread. I know from my training that I showed y'all that my risk right here is $3.73, right? I know that because this is a $5 spread and I'm earning $1.27 in premium, the difference between $5 and $1.27 is $3.73. But you don't have to do that in your head. Think of swim does it for us. If you see here, $1.27 times 100 in one contract is $127. $3.73 times 100 is my max loss risk, which is $373. So that just lets me know I can do it on the fly or I can allow Think of swim to tell me I know the most I could lose, no matter how low Amazon would go by November 13th, beyond the 30.95 trade strike price. The maximum I'm ever losing is $373. I also know the max I'm making is $127. I'm collecting that up front. As soon as I press send or the order gets filled, that's money in my account. Now, again, that doesn't excite a lot of people because it's $127, but this is a sample. I'm risking $127, I'm earning $127, but only risking $373. When I do the math of that return on capital, I'm over, let's see, 127, about 39% return. Everybody Most understand that? So she's only, she's only risking, she's only risking 300 and, uh, hold on. $3. 373. 373 to make 127. And and the cool thing about this company that she's in is that the probability of, of Amazon being below $3,100 on next week is the probability is high. 
Amazon, I mean, something <laughs> yeah. something really yeah. bad would have to happen right. for this trade to go against Sabrina. This is this is almost like the holy grail of trading because there's damn near no way she can lose. Right. Amazon, <laughs> yeah, Amazon would have to, uh, a plane would have to fall out the sky for Amazon to, to lose. And, and she's she's in the driver's seat in this in this situation. And if she hit that number 10, you're going to really understand the significance of what she could really do. Go ahead, Sabrina. Right. So I wanted to show the simple one first, the simple math. But you're right. Looking at 10 contracts, the numbers get more exciting. I know to everybody. It got exciting to me. So we look at that. Now I can earn $1,270 risking $3,700. So this is a $5,000, like $5 times 10 contracts is $5,000. So the difference between... $5,000 of risk minus the $1,270 they're going to pay me as soon as I get my order filled. I'm leveraging $3,730. I'm still getting that 39% return on my money. I don't have to come up with, how much was this? If I pick the 3,100 times 10, I mean, that's 310,000. I don't know. Something. 300, $310,000. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't have that on, on hand right now. I'm on my way. <laughs> But so in order to play with this type of company, this type of stock, I chose to go with spreads because I felt very comfortable with them. I think I understood how they were, they were being affected or non-affected in this case by what was happening in the market. Um, they're pretty stable. Looking at the volatility rate, it has a lot of people that play in it. I wasn't afraid of not being able to get in or get out if I needed to buy myself or roll myself out. So this is how I'm picking my trades today. That's one. Do you want to see another one? Yes, please. Yes, yes sir. Okay. So Shopify is another company that I like. Absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, did I type it wrong? Shop, S-H-O-P. Here we go. Similar, um, they're not at 3,000, but they're above 1,000. And again, today they moved up over $40, I think, today. So when I was looking at Shopify earlier for next week, I think I was looking to go in at 975, let me go find that. So it's trading at 1036.50, I think last today. So I backed away from that, of course. I don't have to get up close to it. I can move to a spot part that I think I'm, I'm comfortable. So looking at the 975, it's about 22% chance probability of being in the money, it says, by November 10th, again, within my comfort range. So I'm gonna sell the vertical. Right now it says I'll get a dollar and thirty cent in premium. Again, same five dollar spread. I could change this if I chose to. I'd collect more, but I'd also risk more. So if I put this at nine sixty five, you see it goes up to a dollar seventy. But that's a ten dollar spread. I'm fine with nine seventy. Sorry. So it's a dollar thirty. Ten contracts, dollar thirty. When we look at what I'm risking versus what I'm going to collect, $1,300 I would collect in premium. I'm risking $3,700. Doing the math on that return, it's also a 35% return on capital. I like being in the 30s. <laughs> That's I see. Kind of like it works for me. Um, yep. So again, to leverage $3,700, I'm collecting $1,300. Again, another good company. Looking at the volatility that week, I think it was around 49. It's a little higher than what you know Amazon was, but still within that 30 to 60 percent threshold that you talked about, Della. So felt pretty comfortable with that. Again, a lot of volume in this company. I don't have any problems getting my trades through or getting out or rolling. Not yep. uh, I'll give you the number. Hold on, Sabrina. Is that so for November the 13th? What's the date on that? That's November 13th. Um, that's next that's Friday. Week G. from Friday. I didn't do the one for tomorrow because. Right, right, no doubt. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it was a week out. Yeah, it's next Friday. Hmm. So, and I, and Sabrina, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you get to one more. But I want to say, so, so when you all, when yeah. you all go, after you collect three, three, four, five, six thousand dollars worth of premium, take that, take that premium money, and go do you a couple spreads, in addition to your five contracts or your 10 contracts, go ahead and try one. And, and I highly suggest, 
I highly suggest, uh, I've seen a couple of texts going back and forth, that you go to that paper money and do this same trade tomorrow to see if it if it if it if it, if it holds right. true. Right. Go go use that paper money to make your mistakes. So go practice. I suggest everybody go practice. When somebody asks you, hey, how can I grow a small account? This is one of the ways. Mm-hmm. Hey, Sabrina, uh, I know I discussed this with you on the phone there, but mm-hmm. on your example there, you got your 970 that you're selling, you're buying it, selling yeah. the put. And then the 975 that you're buying it. So you got your five dollar spread there. Mm-hmm. What, what, what about the break point? So would the break point be 90? So if you 92? look here, it tells you the break even here is 973.70. Oh, okay. It tells you right there. Okay. Yeah. And, and Think like of you said, just, will tell you. Just as long as you stay above your break point, you're still good to go to expire. I right? mean, if you're hmm. looking at it, like I said. Sometimes I'll look to get out if I think it's going to potentially move against me. If I got closer than my 25%, I'm trying to get out when I'm at 80% profitability. So oh. you can look at where that break even price was and how it's trading in comparison. Also, the platform will tell you your PL for the day or, you know, since you've okay. opened it. So okay. you can get out and you would have to pay some money back, but you pay at most, in this case, 20% of what you collected back and you keep the 80. Yeah. That's if I think it can move against me or something weird is happening. Yeah, I see. It's good that they list the break point. Uh, yeah, the break even, your break even, your break even right there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when it starts dropping below mm-hmm. nine seventy three, nine seventy three sixty nine, then you, you you potentially are losing more than you at thirteen hundred plus that you've lost. You've actually lost some money. So say it starts dipping on you and you want to want to buy out. How do you buy out of it? You just go same, in like same way like, you do now. Um, like regular, you can go. Uh, uh, you can, I don't think I have anything open right now in here, but you can so go to it and do a close trade on it, or you can so, roll it. Same so way you're going to make it. Okay, so buy the close. Yeah, buy the close because you sell the open. This is a selling. We're selling um, um, bull put spreads, bull credit spreads. So you buy the close it the same way. Sorry. Hey, and 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 if you all look up at the left hand corner, Sabrina is using her simulated. Yeah, I'm in my trade. simulated account. So she's in her 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 paper money account right now. Trying to find some of my old ones, but I guess I can't see it. I have to go further back. Um, let me see. Account statement. I'm sharing my screen. It's hard to see. <laughs> oh yeah. I can't see at the very top. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see if I can move this down. Yeah, you got to move our faces around on the screens, kind of. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting it. Just, ooh, let's see. Let's go back. Statement. And Sabrina, you also told me uh, also that you usually do uh, seven to 10 days. Yeah, so like I said, this Friday, this week, I'm looking for next week. So okay. I would start looking about Wednesday, potentially. If I got out of something, you know, I might start looking on Wednesday for the following Friday. So that's about 10 days out. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I told you before, I saw some people were uh, 41 days, 60 days out. Yeah, uh, I'm not I'm not going that far because yeah. like Della told us, right, when we're selling, you don't want to tie your money up. You want to, you know, do shorter time. But if you're buying like on the on the what leaps, you want to give yourself as much time as possible for the, you know, for the growth. So I'm not, I'm not going that far because mm-hmm. I, I mean, it can move against me. The plane could actually fall out the sky by the end, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yep. Uh, why can't I see? I was trying to go. I can't see. These are some of my own, but it doesn't show my traits. I'll keep looking if I can find some, and I'll share that later. But so, like I said, have I lost some money? Of course, I've lost some by having to buy back some things. But like I shared before, I didn't lose any of my original money. I only had lost over time some collected premium. I think Carmisha mentioned she grew her account from two thousand to nine thousand. So. I was very impressed. Yeah. And uh so Sabrina, and we and we may just we may just continue to touch on this uh every week until you know we kind of get flowing with it. Right. Yeah. Uh, and once I get my other computer back, I'll I'll go to my simulated trading. But yeah. I'm just trying to incorporate what everybody is doing into the mm-hmm. call so that nobody feels like they're left out, they can get their questions answered. This may be a better 
this this may be something that you can do in addition to what you already are trying to you know master or whatever. So uh Cormisha did join. So Cormisha, if I can ask you to uh show us how this all looks to you on your Robin Hood uh platform. And and y'all know real quick before Kamisha takes over. These are these are videotaped. So everything that Sabrina did, I mean, you can go back over and look at this five, six times and slow it down and do it, pull it up on your phone and, and just walk it through. Everything, all, the, the, the PowerPoint that she did when she first introduced this, all of that's there. And, and I go back and look at this stuff because many times there's there's like, you know, hints that she says, you know, I, I like being in this area. And that's some stuff that you may not, having your notes when she's talking about it, when she's presenting, mm -hmm. but you'll pick up on it when you go back. These these videos are great, man. You go back and see some of the stuff we covered. We have covered a lot, whether it's trapping the price, um, you know, day trades, all this stuff that got us excited when we heard it. Man, just be mindful and stay in here because it's, it's just gold in here. You know? Yep, good point, G. Can y'all see it? I started sharing. No. Okay. There we go. Yep. yep. Okay. So this is the rubber head. When it turns, like it's after hours, so it turns black right now, just showing. Overall, it's fairly simple. This is it. Like there's no extras, no glitz. When you go in to do an option, like you utilize the search or your list to try to get to the options chain. And so like Tesla, right? I have these contracts open right here, right now. And so this is what it's, it's telling us that's going on with Tesla. This is the chart. So I like TD Ameritrade way better than Robinhood just on how it looks, but it's, it allows me to do it and i look at i look at td ameritrade charts before i try to do my stuff just because this sucks like this is all it is there's no looking even when you do the expansion like it sucks hmm. theirs isn't as good as um td ameritrade but it makes me make my money and for that i'm thankful um so here it's saying like the contracts, I have eight contracts open still. This is the, the amount of money that's still in them, 248. These are the ones that will expire tomorrow overall forward. Um, I actually just did these. I think I did these today. It should have told me. Yeah, I did this, this trade today or yesterday overall for it. So it's, this is a $250, 2.5. Um, dollar trade overall for it. My average that I'm getting for these are what? $81. And then when you try to do the trade options, like our options chain that we're so used to seeing in TD Ameritrade, this, <laughs> this, wow. Let me, let me meet I, I don't even know how, wow. <laughs> right, so. <laughs> I mean, but it's simple and the way yeah. I told my mom, my sisters and my brother-in-law, like I told them when I was at home, how to do it, choose your date, just go to the date first and they have them all listed overall for it. So like Sabrina was showing, I'll go to the Amazon one that she, I did. Just to keep it. So November 13th is the date that's going to expire. This is call versus put in regards to it. This is showing you where the share price is right now. And then you just toggle back and forth from buy to sell when you're doing your trades. Now it looks a little different like on the website versus the phone there's a button on the phone that you have to press select to be able to get like the plus signs for buying and selling the trade 
at the same time. So like, you know, these so are- So does it even give you like details on, you know, the open interest, the volume, you know, probability nope. of being in the money? The chances of profit okay. overall for it. So okay. this is, that is the biggest one. But okay. everything else, no. So like your your numbers were what again? I'm sorry. I think I did thirty one hundred and thirty ninety five. Okay, so thirty one hundred and thirty ninety five. So this is saying an eighty seven point six one chance of profit. So this is probability out of the money, and then the eighty eight percent probability out of the money for the um thirty ninety five. So you would do. Toggle to sell the closer one. And toggle to buy. It's more challenging. Yeah, you gotta click more buttons. And then toggle to buy. Yeah. And you can easily see yes. somebody that's new to Robin Hood <laughs> could <laughs> mess this up. Yeah. yeah. And so that's it true. does it. It shows you like so. This is a sixty dollars spread overall for it here, which is interesting. When you did yours, it. And I get, yeah. I, I saw your numbers too. This 1315 was there, but it was, it's a $60 spread. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had a dollar or something premium. It was but the live, in the live, the numbers are like this. Okay. Okay. But, so maybe the simulated one was behind. But maybe, I'm maybe team, behind. So this is the one of the things that this is why I do. So I do look at TD Ameritrade because you see this limit price? It is a dollar eighty at mm -hmm. max and it's saying sixty. So yeah. I change mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd be missing out on money. Right. You just trust what it popped up at, yeah. And so this is maybe how like a lot of because Robinhood is a, a a tertiary entity, and so their stuff gets processed later, mm -hmm. and it sometimes has a delay. But I think this is why it's so profitable for like whoever made the Robinhood because they pocket the remainder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I changed this, and then it'll review the order. See how it's going slow. My computer's slow too, though. So, but I think I think Sabrina and Carmisha pretty much uh, kind of mastered, or or they're on their way to. Basically, their understanding of these spreads is is uh will continue to grow, but it is at a high level for the time that they've been in it. But the, these spreads could be very advantageous, and so it's it's just learning something new. The 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 touch and feel of the buttons is is kind of similar, but the concept is different. Basically, everybody on this phone can do this, right? So. You just buying up, you just selling a put like you normally would and buying a call and buy and buying a put. Buying a put. So, yep, you're just mm -hmm. gonna sell sell a put and buy a put on the same side on the same exp expiring week. Mm -hmm. So it's not like this should be foreign. And you can and, and the good thing about TD Ameritrade is you can't go in there and practice. Mm -hmm. You it, it's set up for you to screw up and get as much knowledge practice as much as you want i highly recommend that you go just go put a spread in tomorrow for for friday's expiration uh the companies now uh sabrina hit on one of the companies well two of them actually so i did have another one autozone azn is another good company to do uh to do this spread in uh Priceline was my other one. So that was my three. Amazon, AutoZone, and Priceline. I guess I don't want to work. It, what I was looking for is it will tell you the same amount of like, this is the amount of collateral. So they do it differently in showing what it happens. So that'll say the minimum credit and then the collateral, which would be the... $500 right here. So That's it's the same, 
same amount that Sabrina was showing you all, the maximum amount of loss that it could have. So, so what Carmisha is saying is, what Sabrina showed you on the other platform, uh, there it is right there. Well, it was one of the questions I think Tony had asked was, hey, where's my break even? What's my max loss and what's my max profit? And so it, it, it gives you a breakdown of what that all is, is what she's trying to show us, but it's looking like, uh, oh, there it is. Yeah, it's up yeah. there. Yeah, it's up there. So it's, it's saying the collateral, the minimum credit. This will do it sometimes because they're like, dang, you getting a lot of money for just a little bit of money overall for it. And are right. we supposed to pay you or are you supposed to pay us? <laughs> Choose your credit. <laughs> oh, wow. You got to do that? See? Yes, sometimes. Yes. Because <laughs> they're like, wait, bro, you getting this amount of money? Right. What are you doing? <laughs> That's crazy. That's confusing. That would get a lot of people I could see newbies. Yes. A lot of new folks, they'll they'll yeah. they'll have to call Robin Hood and see if they can change that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So platform wise, TD Ameritrade is amazing. Um Robin Hood just allows me to do my sprays at this point. Mm -hmm. Now Cormisha and I, I want to, and Cormisha, I'm going to put you on the spot because I know you did it so fast. I know you can go back and do it. I don't know if you log, if if maybe you can log in to uh, Think or Swim. Uh, and as I talk through this, Cormisha and I had a conversation and uh, she's always asking me questions that I really, sometimes I have to go in and ask myself. But Cormisha found out a way to, we were trying to figure out what stocks were in the Dow, the S&P 500, and the Russell 2000, so that we can say, okay, if all those stocks are in all those, all those sec, I mean, all those uh, indices, then we could pick out the best ones for us. So Carmisha had went on to Think or Swim, and she was she did this filter that I had never seen before. And so Carmisha, I was gonna maybe ask if you could. Uh, log into yeah. that think or swim and and put on one of those filters to show everybody uh what we kind of discussed okay hold on let me let me do the share again hmm. it just came because i don't know how do we even talk about it again you remember delos i oh. i think i was Go ahead. Yes. So we was trying to say, hey, we, you know, we're going to pick the best stocks we can. Yeah. And so I think it came about where we was like, um, you know, the Dow, the, the stocks, the 30, the 30 stocks that are in the Dow are there for a reason. Like mm -hmm. out of the 10,560, whatever plus stocks there are out there, the Dow said, hey, I'm going to take the best 30. Then the S and P 500 said, "Hey, I'm gonna take the best 506." And then the mm -hmm. Russell 2000 said, "Well, I'm gonna take the top 2,000 companies out of the 10,000, whatever." So what we was trying to do is say, "Hey, what company is listed in all three of those, and those might be the best the best choices to invest mm -hmm. as a way of saying, "Hey, we've just done our homework. This company here is in all of you know. Basically, it's it's in every." The Russell 2000, the Russell 1000, the S&P 500, the S&P 100, the, uh, the, you know, the Dow. And so she had, we, we got to that point of the conversation and she came in here and she was like, there's got to be a way. And I was like, you know, me old school, I was highlighting, I printed off all of them and was highlighting the ones I could find. She came right in here, put a filter together and it just spit it out. So I was like, man, that was awesome. So I just wanted her to share that with everybody because you can do this at home with no problem. Um, so underneath the scan, the scan tab at the top overall for it, like this is the stock hacker scan one. And this is actually the last scan that me I did. So this is right on point with what Dallas was saying. Um, I, we wanted to find out like which of the which of the 2000 stocks 
were also in the NASDAQ 100. Um, which ones of the 25 we did too. And then like, of course, you know, the Dow, which Dow 30s are in the S&P 500 because there's only 30 of the Dow's overall for it. They're trying to see which ones also interlapped that were in the S&P and the Dow and the NASDAQ without having to just highlight with the, the, um, with the highlighters like Delos was doing old school paper. So what you do is you would select the, this, this has all the different stocks, like you could change to all the different stocks, but they have public listings already built in here for TD Ameritrade. And so go to Russell 2000, if that's what you're looking for and select that underneath the public G through R because Russell is under R. And then you would want to intersect this with whatever and so like you could do this and this is how like these are my personal ones that i made and you'll see like combined 30 cash flow and weekly options and i am increased by 10 from 10 bars ago type of deal like there's multiple ways that i could do it this purple is showing is saying that this gets updated on a daily basis like every time it changes um but go to NASDAQ is underneath G through R and the NASDAQ 100 you select. You can change all of these parameters. So this top one is saying that all of the following has to be added in there. And so you can add filters here based upon what you're actually looking for. Um, say you wanted the fundamentals and you say you wanted to see how much their dividend per share was. Like you can search this overall for it as well. So hmm. I'm gonna exit this out just so we can do this first. Um, you can say none of the following, all of the following you can make as your, your filter, none of the following, and you can add the filter here and then any of the following. And just, that's basically saying if it matches one or the other, then I want to add it in here. And when you scan, I don't believe that one. So none of the NASDAQs and the Russell's intersects, that's not true. Okay, so what is the one I gave you, Delos? Did you create a name for it? Mm. Yeah, NASDAQ and Russell intersection. These are all the ones that intersect. Okay, so let's see. <clears throat> okay, this is the NASDAQ composition and then the Russell 2000. Changes to the Russell 1000 and the NASDAQ composition. And you see how this number is changing over here? If you watch with the Russell 1000, the NASDAQ composition, there's 312 that are in both that NASDAQ comp sector and the Russell 1000. And then when I change it to the Russell 2000, sorry. Hey, Cormisha, can you have it where it populate up? It, I, I see that you that it's changing on the side. Can it pop up, populate below? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, there, you there you go. Yeah. All right. So, so basically, what what Carmisha has on the screen right now is the Nasdaq and the Russell two thousand. These are the same. These stocks that she's got up here, they are on both. They are in both the Russell two thousand and the Nasdaq. So, what we were trying to do is figure out, you know what stocks 
the 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 stocks that were in the Dow did they enter were those the same was those some of the same stocks that was on S and P five hundred and the Russell two thousand so we know now from this scan that the Russell two thousand and the Nasdaq have these stocks right here um, on both lists and that's what this scan tells you. So you can change it to say the S and P. You want to see what's on the S and P and goes with the Nasdaq, and it's one hundred and thirty four of them hmm. that are intersecting. You know, I don't know if y'all see. So Apple, uh -huh. of course, you see that one. And so, of course, when you do the S&P 500 and then you change it to just the Dow. Sorry, so file 30. It'll be the all 30 overall yep. for it. So these 30 are, and the Dow are also in S&P 500, of course, that we know. And that goes to Apple. Yep, and it's just a good way, like back, back early on when I was walking through the woods alone, I would I would click on every last one of those S and P five hundred stocks because I I I didn't know how to use like and you know on those screeners I don't hear I don't hear a lot of people talking about those screeners in TD Ameritrade where you can find the volatility you're looking for you can find the dividend that you're looking for and you can do that on here too but uh, early on in some of those videos if you go back and watch to Gerald's point. I kind of stepped through running those screeners a couple in a couple of those videos. So um, like like what she's about to do right now, if you're looking for that sweet spot volatility or you're looking for that wild stallion horse that's out there, you can find whatever whatever fight you want. Like she, you can do high and black. She just did it. Well, I'll let I'll let Cormisha talk to but, but you know, you know what? And Cormisha, you can speak to this, but I, I got on here because Cormisha gave me a, a a quick crash course before <clears throat> and TD Ameritrade walked me through it. So I did on here, it's, it's called um, scanners. So you can scan um, quite a bit, but you know what? I found out on TD Ameritrade, you can really do a deep dive and, and there are screeners, they call them screeners over there and scanners here. You can really do a deep dive over there um, but um, everything you could do over there, you could do over here too. You just gotta know I, how yeah, to build well, it. I needed, yeah, I needed to find it because I couldn't, I couldn't do as much, and they, and they did a better job over there at explaining because you can just kind of hover above what you, yeah. what you're looking at. So I found myself more over there. But if you say so, because I just couldn't find it here. It's like the options. Overall, if you're looking for a specific, uh, specific like how many days to expire. You all of these, all of these menus, these filter menus have additional stuff. So these fundamentals, the studies, and you can look for a particular pattern. If you're somebody who likes, like, y'all in y'all in the in the way. Like when I'm doing it, I put I moved y'all so I can see. Y'all gotta move y'all again. My bad. <laughs> like all of these different patterns, which. I don't know these, you know, but these are patterns that evidently somebody is using to be able to try to figure out and scan how they want to look at their charts, this falling wedge versus the rising wedge. You can add the studies, all the different studies that you we've learned about and have overall for it. the candlestick patterns can be added into here for the studies. Like it's so many things here. You just got to yeah. look in Northern. And so guys, when you guys and girls, when you see a, 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 a trader sitting at his desk and he's got five screens, he's this is what he's got up everywhere. And, and it's just his go to stuff. As Soon as he logs in, he pops up what he what he looks for, or what he uses to make himself successful. And that's, that's why you see the five screens. A lot of people, if you didn't know any better, you walk by and be like, Oh, I think he He's fancy. No, he he's he's reading all that to make to 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 help him uh, do his job. 
uh, mm -hmm. because it's it's just tools that are needed. But um, this is this is some good stuff here. I highly suggest people go in and like Sabrina and uh, Cormisha have shown us, go practice go practice some spreads. Like it 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 it, it would only it's only going to benefit you your understanding of it. It's it's not it's not as hard as it looks. It's it's no different than just buying a put and selling a put. That's all it is. They they just call it a spread because you got two numbers that you're dealing with, and the in, and the in between is the spread. But uh, it, uh, a put spread is nothing than buying a put and selling a put. That's it. So you don't have to complicate it, or I don't care how you see it on a video. It's all it is is the purchase of something and the selling of something on the same side on the same week that's it that's it that's it that's it so next week we'll probably touch on some more of this same type of stuff uh i may reach out to sabrina and uh carmisha earlier in the week like i said we'll probably talk about spreads again next week uh does anybody have any questions any questions okay well, if we don't have any questions, um, I'll, I guess we can uh, let everybody enjoy the rest of their evening. And once again, I just say uh, stay blessed and uh, see you all next week. And if you got any questions in between time, you all know you can just text me, hit me up. So I appreciate Carmisha and Sabrina and everybody for joining, taking Thank it all you. in. Appreciate you all. All right. Thank, Thank you. All. Much. all right, everybody. All right. Take care now. Right. Uh, I'll put right. the I'll put the uh, video up tonight of okay. this. Okay. okay. Jeanette, I never got your spreadsheet, and can you send me the link to where all the videos are, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank hey, you. Jeanette, the same here, Jeanette. Can you do the same with me? Okay. I think everybody needs to appreciate that, Jeanette. You too, Dennis. Okay. Yeah, me too, uh, Jeanette Billy. Okay. I'll just I'll just put it in uh, WhatsApp. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Thank cool. you. All right. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.